Hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mystics. And today, yeah, I thought I might speak on the topic of denial and remembering and, and forgetting. And, and it's just been in my mind recently, like I had this other dream the other night where I was, um, yeah, again, it was like, you know, it was back in BC before the course where I was with a bunch of friends and, and uh, I, in my mind, there was a decision to forget, like I could feel like I was actively putting myself into denial and I was just around all my friends from the past back in the day and I was just thinking like, wow, everyone's in denial. And it was like, it was because I put myself in that, I made that decision for forgetting. And, and then of course, what, what's gonna happen? You're just gonna see outside of yourself whatever decision you made in your mind, so. So yeah, and I was just, Looking at today's, uh, if you follow David's lesson readings on, on YouTube, you'll see that the text today that's associated with the lesson is, um, it's chapter seven, the gifts of the kingdom and section four, healing is the recognition of truth. And it talks about this remembering and, and forgetting. And it says that basically it's like the whole idea of the separation from God was a forgetting. You know, it was like a forgetting God and then remembering a memory that wasn't true and that never happened. And now it's like the Holy Spirit's doing a complete retranslation on that and making it so that it's like we forget this memory and remember God. So it's like still using um, that use of denial in actually a helpful way to actually deny the ego and remember God rather than what well, we seem to originally use it for to deny God and remember something that wasn't true. Yeah, so it says, it's healing as the recognition of truth. And it starts off saying, truth can only be recognized and need only be recognized. Inspiration is of the Holy Spirit, and certainty is of God according to His laws. And that ties into this because it's like the certainty of God is what we're all coming into. That, like that's really what stepping into magnitude is. It's um, having that certainty of God, because again, it's like the separation. It was just, what was it? It was a doubt thought. It's like, oh, actually, I don't know who I am. Who am I again? And it's like, it's like this denial. And it's like this doubt thought. So complete certainty was lost. And, and yeah, so it goes on to say that certainty is of God and not of the ego. So when we're identified with the ego, we can't be certain of anything. That's why it's so important to remember, like, I don't know anything. I'm absolutely clueless. Like, I don't know who I am. I do not know the thing I am. I don't, do not know where I'm going what I'm doing, how to look upon the world or on myself. Like that's always so important to remember because certainty is not of the ego. So the ego can't be certain of anything. And as soon as we think we know something, there's like this I know mind and that's of the ego. And it's like, we know something that's not true. So how can that really be knowledge? So that's why that cluelessness is so important. And Yeah, then it says, healing does not come directly from God, who knows his creations as perfectly whole. Which makes sense, because if God doesn't know of the separation, then what is there to heal? But it says, yet healing is still of God, because it proceeds from his voice and from his laws. It is their result in a state of mind that, it is their result, in a state of mind that does not know him. 
the, st the state is unknown to him and therefore does not exist. But those who sleep are unaware. Because they are unaware, they do not know. And this goes back to the denial. And then it's like, okay, you got some context. And now it's like, so what's the practical step? How can I remember? And here in paragraph two, it says, the Holy Spirit must work through you to teach you he is in you. This is an intermediary step toward the knowledge that you are in God because you are part of him. The miracles the Holy Spirit inspires can have no order of difficulty because every part of creation is of one order. This is God's will and yours. So I feel this is so practical and so important because it says the Holy Spirit must work through you to teach you he is in you. And this is an intermediary step toward the knowledge that you are in God because you are part of him. So it's like, okay, that's what being done through means. That's what being in your function means. And that's why here in this community, we have all these projects and they're really all just backdrops so that we can let the Holy Spirit work through us. And, and yeah, it seems to be like a lot of active doings, but it's actually undoing the doer by practicing to be in a state of mind with the Holy Spirit and being done through by Him. And then it says here, like, why is that important, right? Because, because this is the intermediary step toward the knowledge that you are in God because you are part of Him. It's like so, it's like, wow, that's obvious. Like, wow, I can't believe I didn't realize that. It's like, okay, the Holy Spirit must work through you to teach you He's in you. And that will teach you that you're in God because the Holy Spirit, of course, is part of God. So it's like, wow, okay, that's really important. <laughs> like, let me take a note of that. That's why, that's the purpose. That's why I'm doing these projects. That's why I'm following the Holy Spirit's guidance. It's all for this. And then, and then it says, it goes on to say, the laws of God establish this and the Holy Spirit reminds you of it. When you heal, you are remembering the laws of God and forgetting the laws of the ego. I said before that forgetting is merely a way of remembering better. It is therefore not the opposite of remembering when it is properly perceived. Perceived improperly, it induces a perception of conflict with something else as all incorrect perception does. Properly perceived, it can be used as a way out of conflict, as all proper perception can. And then, and then it goes on to say, the ego does not want to teach everyone all it has learned because that would defeat its purpose. Therefore, it does not really learn at all. The Holy Spirit teaches you to use what the ego has made to teach the opposite of what the ego has learned. Yeah, so this reminds me of when I was going through those years of actively trying to deny God in my mind and go through, go towards the ego's purpose of of whatever, you know, the whole, I want to be a millionaire thing and just, just going for that. And, and, um, and that was like an active denial on my part. Cause I, I was already reading the course and, and I could hear it like the Holy Spirit saying like, this isn't the way, like this is, this is done, you know? And, and I was just trying to bargain and say, no, no, it's okay. Uh, listen, just let me, let me do this. And then I'll find out I don't want it. And it's like the Holy Spirit's trying to really tell me that like, Listen, you already don't want it. You're just caught up in like a deception. Like you're not going to learn this way. This is a complete waste of time. And so during that time period, I picked up a lot of skills, right? Like, you know, a lot of these like marketing and business skills and, and whatever. And here it says that 
The ego does not want to teach everyone all it has learned because that would defeat its purpose. Therefore, it does not really learn at all. And back in that business stage, it was like I was doing really well on like Google Ads with the, the advertising I was doing. And I would, I would never tell anyone what I have learned with it because, you know, it's like because there's this whole idea of competition when it comes to business and, and scarcity and loss. And the Holy, Holy Spirit is just saying that, yeah, you actually didn't learn anything right there. Um, so, and that the ego doesn't want to teach everything that it has learned because that would defeat its purpose. And then it says the Holy Spirit teaches you to use what the ego has made to teach the opposite of what the ego has learned, in quotes. So it's like even, even those skills that I seem to learn during that period, it's all been like retranslated. It's like, you know, when I really gave my life over and I was guided to come to this community, it's like I started using those same abilities, but now like for a different purpose, not for profit or for any kind of personal gain. Now it was for like the Holy Spirit's purpose of just extending and, and giving and sharing the gift and, and sharing the message of the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's like our whole life seems to be revolved around this getting mechanism. Like that's what the ego is, is this getting. So it's like there needs to be a complete flip from that purpose of getting to giving. So that's where everything we seem to have learned before before we came into this purpose was forgetting. And now, and it's funny, it's like forgetting, like forgetting, forgetting God and forgetting something. And then, and now it's like, it's all being repurposed for giving. Like with the Holy Spirit's use, it's always forgiving because, oh wow, it's like forgiving, forgiving, and it's forgiving. And you just keep giving and giving. And what does that do? that strengthens that, wow, I'm actually not lacking. I actually have so much to give. And that strengthens really like your true identity as spirit because spirit's, you know, unlimited and, and only gives. And so that just strengthens that identification as well as when you get, it strengthens the ego's belief in lack. So that's why it's so important to give over everything that we have seemed to learn all of our abilities to the Holy Spirit so that He can use them in this new purpose and, and retranslate them as it says. And then it says after that, Yeah, it says, so it says, the Holy Spirit teaches you to use what the ego has made to teach the opposite of what the ego has learned. The kind of learning is as irrelevant as is the particular ability that was applied to the learning. So really I was thinking like, it doesn't matter what the skill is you have. It's like, there's no better skills or worse skills. Like, you know, you might watch Netta Bowen's like newest music video that she just put out and be like, wow, she's really... She's really got this amazing, great skill that's like way up here and, and all I know how to do is like cook and clean. Like what's the deal with that? You know, it's like, but it's like, no, it's actually the, the ability is completely irrelevant. Like we have to forget all of this anyways. So it's like whatever we seem to learn with the ego is just being retranslated to heal the mind. So really it doesn't matter what kind of skills or abilities you have, or even if you don't have, you don't think you have any. Um, that's not the point. The point is just for healing. It says, All you need do is make the effort to learn, for the Holy Spirit has a unified goal for the effort. If different abilities are applied long enough to one goal, the abilities themselves become unified. So it's like, okay, I know how to do business stuff. Maybe I know how to cook, clean, um, I don't know, I don't, I know how to sing, like maybe you have like a bunch of different abilities. It's just saying that if different abilities are applied long enough to one goal, the goal of forgiveness, then they all become unified. Whereas before it might've been like, oh yeah, I know how to paint 
that doesn't bring me any money. And then, but I know how to um, do marketing. That's really what brings me money. Um, so there's like these different abilities with different goals and all kinds of stuff. But it, here it says, yeah, you apply all of them to one goal, one purpose, the Holy Spirit's of forgiveness, and they become unified. And they become unified because they are channelized in one direction or in one way. Ultimately, then, they all contribute to one result. And by so doing, their simul similarity rather than their differences is emphasized. And this is, I like this next sentence because it's so direct. It says, all abilities should therefore be given over to the Holy Spirit, who understands how to use them properly. He uses them only for healing, because He knows you only as whole. By healing you learn of wholeness, and by learning of wholeness you learn to remember God. You have forgotten Him, but the Holy Spirit, remember, but the Holy Spirit understands that you are forgetting must be translated into a way of remembering. And then goes on to say that really you can't go with, you know, some of the ego and then some of the Holy Spirit. It says, because the ego's goal is as unified as the Holy Spirit's. And it is because of this that their goals can never be reconciled in any way or to any extent. The ego always seeks to divide and separate. So it just reminds me of when, yeah, I was doing the whole business thing and, you know, I would spend the day going after that. You know, I wanted the Lamborghini, I wanted whatever, a false sense of magnitude. And I was really going after that. And then at nighttime, before I would go to bed, I would start listening to David. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to listen to David now, listen to the course. Um, just so I'm not totally insane the next day. It was like some kind of like complete band-aid, like crisis management approach where I had to listen to some, okay, some right-mindedness so I don't go completely insane, but it's like really there was such an instability and like I wasn't happy, I wasn't consistently happy. It was a complete roller coaster and nothing was working out. So the whole band-aid approach, it doesn't work. It's like we have to really go after, you know, it's like, make a decision. It's like, just go for the Holy Spirit. Um, because, yeah, their goals can never be reconciled in any way or to any extent. And then it says, the Holy Spirit always seeks to unify and heal. As you heal, you are healed, because the Holy Spirit sees no order of difficulty in healing. Healing is the way to undo the belief in differences, being the only way of perceiving the Sonship as one. This perception is therefore in accord with the laws of God, even in a state of mind that is out of accord with His. The strength of right perception is so great that it brings the mind into accord with His, because it serves His voice, which is in all of you. And it's great, I just want to mention too, like, with this show, it, you know, it seems more and more like Nicholas is feeling guided. Um, it's going to be more spontaneous whether he's on the show or not. And like I just noticed with me, like, sometimes having someone else on the show, it's like, you know, it depends, of course, what's the guidance for each show. but. I noticed the last, this show and the last one have seemed to just be me because there's some kind of like deferral in my mind. Like I'll just like, if I, if I'm like, if, if some kind of fear creeps in like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I, what to say next or whatever, like then, then I'll be like, okay, I'll just close my mouth and hope that my co-host speaks. But now it's like, <laughs> it's nice, it's, it's healing because now it's like, okay, if I'm, if I'm not really flowing with whatever I'm going to say, it's the Holy Spirit's like, listen, you just need to pause and pray. And it's like, I, I never wanted to, 
like pause and pray like on a show or actually like ever because of some kind of belief that you know that that's weird like you don't just close your eyes and and this and that and and uh it's like healing this part of my mind that is still like tied into the world like when i would be around like friends or family or whatever i'll be like self-conscious of that too it's like i can't just like close my eyes and pray or meditate like that's weird like no one does that you know as and it's like now i'm like put into a position where yeah actually that that's really helpful it'll wash away that self-concept and that those uh beliefs you still have of like what's right or what's wrong or whatever so and it's like very like humbling <laughs> so yeah i might just every now and then just pause and sink in and let whatever we're reading like just digest and and you can just join me in that so and wash away like this idea of like that's weird you know you know when you watch tv or the radio it's like sometimes it just feels like they're just going on and on it's like what's how come no one ever like pauses and prays and <laughs> on tv so it's like yeah it's like more of like a sat sang kind of kind of approach and i, I remember calico actually once said i think somehow she was involved with the radio and they said that um what do they say like if there's no if there's no talking or there's no music then that's like complete dead space you have to fill up all the space like as much as possible or we'll lose money we'll lose profits and uh and that was like something that was like really strongly em emphasized emphasized in like the radio industry so it's like it's like what is the purpose if it's for profit then it's like okay yeah fill up the radio space and if it's for forgiveness it's like okay use the silence sink in Yeah, and I love this next paragraph. It says, To think you can oppose the will of God is a real delusion. The ego believes that it can, and that it can offer you its own will as a gift. You do not want it. It is not a gift. It is nothing at all. And this is beautiful because, you know, there might be some idea too that, okay, if I accept the ego's gift, then like, I'm terrible and I'm sinful and like I deserve punishment and I deserve whatever all these crazy ideas and here it's just saying no you don't want it because it's not a gift it's nothing you know it's like it's not like an attack on God in truth it's just nothing and then it goes on to say God has given you a gift that you both have and are when you do not use it, aka denial, you forget that you have it. By not remembering it, you do not know what you are. Healing, then, is a way of approaching knowledge by thinking in accordance with the laws of God and recognizing their universality. Without this recognition, you have made the laws meaningless to you. Yet the laws are not meaningless, since all meaning is contained by them and in them. Yeah, and in this next paragraph, I just love this line. It says, healing is a way of forgetting the sense of danger the ego has induced in you by not recognizing 
its existence in your brother. That's why mighty companions are so important, and that's why this Course keeps talking about Christ's vision. It's like whatever you see in your brother, it's whatever you see in yourself, in your own mind. So that's why it's being like really attentive to like, okay, what am I seeing in my brother? It's like no matter what, no matter what you're seeing in your brother, it's always coming from you. Like there's nothing outside of you. There's nothing going on. Like this person's not go really going through this, and this person's going through this, and and it's like yeah, they're going through this, 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 and I'm going through this. It's like no, just remember like like. The only, I think it says in the Course, the only response or the only reaction to your brother is appreciation. So that's why it's so important where it says, yeah, healing is a way of forgetting the sense of danger by not rec recognizing its existence in your brother. This strengthens the Holy Spirit in both of you because it is a refusal to acknowledge fear. Love needs only this invitation. It comes freely to all the sonship, being what the sonship is. By your awakening to it, you are merely forgetting what you are not. This enables you to remember what you are. 